Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now this time around I want to jump into a topic we actually have not discussed yet on this channel and that is how to use metal leaf in our artwork. Now if you're not familiar with what metal leaf is, I have a sample right here. Metal leaf in this case is very 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 thin sheets of in this case colored aluminum and if you come in here you can see, let me see if I can pick this up delicately uh, because it is incredibly delicate. Look at that. It's, uh, it, it is very much shaking like a leaf. And the thing about working with metal leaf is that it allows us to put a blast of metallic color into something that we're working on. And uh, it really does stand out uh, from, from the background. So we're going to play around a little bit of this. Uh, let's see if we can reserve this sheet. It's, once, once you pull them out, sometimes it's hard to put them back in. And uh, we'll work with some different colors so you can see it tears very easily. It just stuck to my thumb. And that's all you wrote. And I have a number of different colors. I have uh, some purple here and I have greens and blues. And we'll get a chance to kind of work on something. What I want to do is I want to work on an abstract collage and I want to use the metal leaf as part of the collage to really enhance things. So this is going to be a very monochromatic. We're going to be using uh, uh, black. We're going to be using sheets of black and on our uh, white here we're going to create a just kind of an interesting shape. And what I'm thinking of is almost like a um, for lack of a better term in my mind, almost like a pile of rocks that are sitting on top of one another. We're going to kind of create this thing and there'll be a, a hollow that we can look through. We'll be able to see uh, that burst of color. Almost like the looking through and seeing the moon come out or something like that. So I'm going to grab my, uh, my trusty scissors here and I'm going to start by just kind of creating a, uh, a shape here. And I'm going to try to make it as organic and interesting as possible. And let me just come in here and something like this and I'm going to make sure that we have our, our straight edges which are you know how the paper comes. I'm going to mellow those out a little bit and just make this again a little bit more organic and smooth. Now one of the things I want to do is as I'm pulling my rock pile together I want the rocks to sort of kind of fit together. Again if you can imagine a pile of rocks they're, they're, they're not perfectly fitting into one another but in this scenario, what I'm thinking that'd be really interesting is if I come in here, and again, I'm going to just use a, uh, I'm going to use a mechanical pencil here to make it life easier for myself, and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to trace the outline of my first piece. So let me just come in here, and again, you might, you know, working working with black and 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 white here, it looks like it's very hard to see the boundaries of my piece. Looks like we did that okay. So I can see, in essence, what is happening. What I want to do now is I want to come in here and I want to cut along that line that I just created to work on my second piece. This will be the piece that will go above it in this piece of art. And let's go and again, it doesn't have to be super precise. You just want to make sure you don't leave any of the pencil mark on your on your cut piece of paper because that's going to get in the in the way of the effect. Okay, and I can kind of do that. So, so now what we're going to end up seeing is this piece is going to be like here and this piece is going to kind of go above it like this in some way. But you see there'll be a gap between the two of them. Let me pull it up so you can actually see that a little bit better. So I want to create, create kind of a white chasm, if you will, between the two pieces. Now for this next piece, all I need to do is, again, kind of finish it the way I want it to be. And I'll do that. Let me get this, again, this kind of. All right. So now if we put these together, they look like they kind of belong together. So again, I'm starting down here in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to kind of bring those together like that. So we have the foundation for what we're looking for here. I need to have something over here that's going to work on this side as well. So again, if I slide my new piece of paper in here on the edge, with the pieces already sort of where I want them to be, I can now trace around the different shapes on this side. And there's one and there's the other. And so what this allows me to do, and again, it may be very hard to see on camera, and I appreciate that, but I can come in here and I can make sure that whatever the piece is going to sit here on the right-hand side, it has a certain amount of, you know, again, fitting those, 
same kind of contours. I'm not going to be fanatical about making it exactly perfect, but I do want to have pieces that look like they actually fit together. That there's a there's a reason for them to be working and sitting next to one another. Okay. So now with those pieces there, I can start to go a little further across. All right, so that doesn't look like much there. I may have to soften this little point down here. But again, now that we're bringing all the pieces together, it's almost like we're creating our own puzzle. And I can start to say those pieces are going to go there, and that's going to go there. You see how all that's working? Yeah, I probably should have used something like a white pen to really make this stand out, make it easier for you to see what's going on. So that's going to be pretty good, I think. Uh, get my, my scraps out of the way. And let's just make this kind of look like this. All right, so that's going to be the piece that's going to sit on top of these. And again, if I start to get back to rearranging all my pieces, this sits on top of this. This is going to sit here like this and fit across. So again, it, uh, it looks like it's uh, doing a pretty good job. Now, thinking ahead, I want to have uh, another piece that's going to sit up here maybe about halfway. And then maybe this is where we're going to put our, our colored piece. We'll have to see. And then at some point, I want to have a, a piece that's going to sit up here at the very tippy top. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. This is, uh, you know, this is the, like any task that we put in here. Um, it's, it's not always exciting to watch anybody cut paper out in real time. I, I recognize that. And I uh, try to speed through these things as quickly as, as possible because uh, we want to make sure that this is an exciting proposition for anybody who's uh, following along at home. But again, keeping it realistic, it's not, it's not the kind of thing we do, you know, in 10 minutes necessarily. It's going to take a little bit of time to get us to where we need to be. All right, close enough for what we're trying to do. This final piece is going to sit on top. We'll follow these contours. So we have put together an amazing uh, jigsaw puzzle. That's going to have all these pieces that are going to come in here like this, and even these pieces here at the top. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to spend some time, I want to glue these pieces down. I'll, I'll spare you from the, uh, the watching a, a human being glue pieces of paper down portion, but I'm going to line these things up and try to create this, uh, again, these interactions with these pieces. When we get back, we're going to focus our attention on the thing that's missing, this hollow space. I'm going to show you how we can really enhance this piece with a nice burst of color. So I'll see you back in a moment. Okay, welcome back. Uh, now, as you can see, everything's been pasted down for the most part. And uh, what we want to be able to do now, of course, is figure out how to, uh, how to make this spot of color appear for what we're doing. Now, again, I want to work with some metal leaf. And as I mentioned before, there are different types of uh, metal leaves that we can get, of course, if you're, you know, if you're fancy schmancy and can afford it, you can work with gold. I can work with something that looks like gold, but isn't gold, probably more of a brass leaf. So again, as I've demonstrated, this stuff is, is, is paper, paper, paper thin, super, super thin. This would blow away in a breeze very easily. It is the thinnest uh, foil you're ever going to find. And what I want to do is I want to be able to utilize this color, the metallicness of it, in this spot right over here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start by using what is known as a metal leaf adhesive. Now, I will just share with you that when you put this in a drawer and leave it for a while, make sure it's not lying on its side because, well, ask me how I know that, right? Might be a, might be a little bit of a mess, might be a, some things stuck together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, a fairly small paintbrush here. And let me uncork this guy. And this is a, this is a latex style liquid. It's a kind of a white cloudy liquid. And what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to paint it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it where I want whatever this thing I'm going to be putting down with my metal leaf where I want it to appear. And again, it's helpful if you have well, good lighting here because you want to be able to kind of see the areas where you're painting. And what I want to do is I want to come in here and be very careful, of course, not to drip it on your artwork. That would be bad. But I want to come in here and set some parameters. What I'm basically doing is I'm putting that a big spot of glue. 
That's what this is going to do. And I'm going to try to make kind of a circular thing in here. And then again, just fill it in with as much adhesive. Now I realize and appreciate that on camera, this looks like some dude painting nothing on nothing. And uh, trust me when I tell you that we are getting a layer of wet down this adhesive. And what will happen now is once we get this down where we want it, the adhesive will dry. And then uh, once it dries, we, it leaves behind a very, very, very tacky surface. So I'm going to just get this in here as smooth as I can. I can already start to see places where it's drying. Now, again, with your paintbrush, make sure it goes into something that will uh, will keep it wet. This is, uh, this is water soluble for a period of time. And then after that, uh, not so much. And you'd have to really muck around. Pretty much like paint, right? Any kind of paint, you'd have to wait a little bit for this to happen. So let me give this a moment or two. I may hit this with a hair dryer for that spot of glue to dry, and then I'll come back and show you the, uh, the magic part of this whole thing. Okay, welcome back. Now, it only took actually a couple of minutes, and I spent a little time with a hair dryer, but now if you look down here, yeah, this whole section is very tacky. Very tacky because, uh, well, we put some glue down, right? It stands to reason. And what we want to do now is we want to take advantage of that tackiness and, and think of it like putting glitter on something where you put the glue down, you put the glitter on it, and of course the glitter sticks to the glue. Only in this case, our glitter is going to be this sheet of whatever you want to put in here. Now again, when I'm using a big brush, by the way, just kind of pat this in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this into the adhesive. You can see it kind of flattening down like that. And what's going to happen is it's going to go where, where I brush it. So while this is a solid piece of metal, so to speak, once it gets put down here a little bit manhandled, it starts to disintegrate very quickly. What I can do now is let me grab another one and I'm going to drop this in up here. And the same principle, look, it just so easily it just sticks to your fingers. Well, I also probably have some adhesive there. But we're going to come in here and we're going to just simply brush it to the places where we want it to adhere to the adhesive. And as we use our brush, it's going to smooth out the foil that we see. Let me just kind of get that in there. There we go. That works. I think we're going to need another piece for sure. And it looks like I have a piece that's sort of been chewed up a little bit. So this will be nice to use it. There we go. And so the part that, you know, is, is sticking to the stuff that's already in here, that's uh, already been covered, is not going to be necessary. We want to move the pieces around. And again, you can start to see, I need one more sheet. You can start to see that it's only sticking to the thing we want it to stick to, and it won't stick to the paper itself. Oh, that's not what I was trying to do, but that'll get us there. Yeah, put that right in there, like that. Okay, let's see if we can stick that down. Beautiful. Looks like uh, looks like that's happened. Now again, you want to be careful that you don't, you know, like with a glitter bomb, right? It's kind of hard to get glitter off of everything in the future, so you might want to work on a fairly controlled environment. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to kind of use my brush to come in here and uh, get rid of anything that is loose that is not really part of this. And, also, I want to work on my boundaries here and just get in there and kind of dig away at anything that might be on the edges here and have it tear away. We only want it to be where the adhesive is, and that will create a fairly, fairly smooth line of where we painted. You can already see that coming into being here. Now, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab a paper towel, and I'm going to wet it down slightly with my bottle of water. And what I'm going to try to do here is just, I'm trying to basically make, not make a mess by coming in here and picking up these elements best I can. Brush them off here. And again, we, <laughs> we might need to experiment with, uh, with using uh, an erasing tool of some sort. All right, and as you can see now, if you look at this, and again, hopefully the camera will do this justice, is we have our pieces. I'm going to work on trying to erase a little bit of that metal leaf that got on things. It's, it's, uh, it, it makes a bit of a mess, I'm not going to lie to you. And you want to make sure that you have something that's not going to you know, get this track all over your house or wherever you're working. But um, it works. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Now, I'll be honest with you, I probably, if I were to redo this again, this is pretty much a prototype idea, I might move the circle a little bit closer to the center, maybe have it closed off on this side. 
But as a proof of concept, and just to show you how we can do this, again, one of the nice things about working with metal leaf, especially with this adhesive, is it leaves such a bold ball of color, or whatever you put in there, right? You can, you can, you can come in here and put stripes in here. Wherever the glue goes, the leaf will go, and what you're going to end up with something that really pops beautifully. And again, the camera's not doing it justice. When you see the light coming off of this metallic sheen, it's uh, it really very powerful. So I'm going to work on this a little bit and try to clean it up as best I can. But again, as a proof of concept and to share with you this idea of how we can use metal leaf in our mixed media art, that's why we're here today and what I'm trying to do. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, please hit that like button. It really helps us out. And if you like what we've done here overall, we do this every single week. Every, every Friday morning, I drop a brand new video for y'all. And I'm always happy to share some insights and tips and tricks into mixed media art, creation, tools, etc. So if you like that kind of thing, yeah, hit on the subscribe button and we'll do this every week. Anyway, that's all I have for you this time. Thanks so much for dropping by and I will see you next time.